Hello everybody, Diesel Johnny Boy here. Um, I've been meaning to do this little short video for a while, so here we go, I'm going to actually do it now. What I want to talk to you about today is the bump clearances on your diesel engines, on your, like your, your single cylinders, your twins, and your, mainly your listers and your petters, but a lot of it will apply to all the, all the sort of sort of diesel engines of the of this sort of period like your vintage engines um so yeah it's something I, i've not seen this video on youtube so i thought it'd be quite interesting if i did a did a quick one on it so basically your bump clearances are it's the clearance between the top when the pistons at top dead center and it, in its relation to the to the bottom side of the cylinder head now in in these engines in the diesel engines you've got very very tight tolerances I mean you're talking about a few thousandths of an inch here and this is all about getting your compression up as high as possible so that the, the mixture will explode as it's heated up to a great temperature as the piston compresses the air and the minute drop of diesel is then sprayed in by the injector so that these clearances are quite important to get as you know to get right basically now as an engine wears obviously your big ends and your main bearings do wear and the torrents do change but that's obviously factored in by the manufacturers but if you do do any sort of major surgery to your engine and uh, grinding in valves and, and that sort of thing uh, it may be necessary to check your bump clearances so in your manual that you should have it's always a good idea to get on these manuals the bump clearance is always talked about this particular engine I'm going to look at now is a PETA PC1. Now the bump clearances for this engine, you can just see that, oh, it's not very focusing very well, but they're, they're basically between 24 thousandths of an inch to 28 thousandths of an inch. So that's the clearance between the top of your piston and the bottom side of your cylinder head here. Now this has to be done in, by using shins. On the, pit, on, on, on the listers and the petters, they're, they're quite similar, but they do have slightly different ways of doing it. Um, the, the petter engine, on this particular one, the PC1, uses these shims are on the bottom of the barrel. They go, so they go on the bottom of the barrel, which then goes onto the crankcase. So you've got these different size shims. I've made these ones up because I didn't have the originals. These are all different different diameter different widths They're about three or four thousand these ones um, obviously there's a cylinder head goes on the top there but on Lister engines it's slightly different the Lister engine it has a the Lister engine has a gasket copper gasket which sits on the bottom on top of the crankcase underneath the barrel so it'd be down there but the shims are done on the top so if this was a Lister engine we'd have the the head gasket which is like a steel ring which would sit on there like that this is obviously not a lister engine but I'm just showing you then you have these little shims they're normally like 3,000 this is for an SR1 engine which I've just been doing up so these are 3,000 of an inch these shims the cylinder head will always be the same so you use your cylinder head regardless that goes on now normally I put normally on the lister engines I put the shims on first and stick on with a bit of grease then put the, the thicker head gasket on afterwards so it all sort of holds it in and that maybe is less likely to blow because the little shims are very very thin but basically the how we do this I'll just talk about how you did it on the on the PETA PC1 engine which is this engine here if you imagine this is the barrel obviously of the PETA that would be sat on top of the engine and the piston would be in there obviously there's no piston in that so the piston would be, you'd have your piston at top dead centre and you get yourself a couple of bits of lead. This is like lead solder or soft for plumbing. And you would literally, you'd work out where your valves are going and you make sure that obviously you put the uh, lead on top of the piston somewhere where the valves won't touch. So you've got a clear clearance, one there, maybe one there, maybe one there. So you sit these bits of lead on top of the piston, like so, one there and say one there, right? Then 
before you put the cylinder head on, drop the piston down so rotate the crankshaft. And by the way, obviously at this point you've obviously got some idea, you put a couple of these shims on maybe, you obviously would know what you took off and it's obviously put back on what you took off. And that's and that'll be sort of guidance to, to get you into the right sort of field. So that basically puts your, your shim on, or two shims depending on what you originally took off, put those back on, put your lead on top of your piston, then you put your cylinder head gasket back on, the majority of that will sit on there like that, this is one we've made up, then you put your piston, your, your cylinder head on, like so, torque it all down to the correct foot pounds using a proper torque wrench here we go i've got a, this is a very nice king dip torque wrench that i've got off ebay actually it's a lovely model <coughs> torque it down to the correct foot pounds in the case of the um of the petter cylinder head nuts are 38 pounds foot pounds so you torque that down get it all torqued down at this point you don't really you don't have to have all your push rods on or anything you can just do this without anything on actually so then there we go then you basically wind the engine round the piston will come up squash the lead and then basically you've got to take it all apart at that point it's a bit laborious you then use you will then be left actually I've got a little bit of lead you will then be left with a piece of squash lead not unlike this piece here that's a little piece of lead that originally was there and its ends get squashed like that. The lead gets squashed. You then need to use your micrometer to measure that lead. And if that lead is not within your torrances, which are in the, the PETA PC1 is 24 to 28 thou, you will then have to shim it either way. So if, you, if your gap's too great, then you've got to add another shim basically until you get it right. You know, the trouble is on these petter engines it's a bit of a pain in the ass because each time you do the bump clearance you've got to take the um, big ends off and the piston has to come up as well. Well on the Lister engine you don't have to do that because the shims are on directly under the cylinder head but because on the petter engine the shims are below the barrel you've got to take the barrel off so you've got to undo your big ends and lift the whole barrel with the piston and connecting rod in situ so it is a bit of a pain in the ass but it's got to be done there's no other way around it if you want to get your bump clearances right so obviously it's always advisable to have your your users manual that's one for your petter and there's one for your lister there oh, these manuals are invaluable they give you all your torque settings etc etc it's quite important for the um for the uh, see where are the bump clearances for this one. So I did this. I did one of these yesterday. Here we go. Look, to check cylinder head clearances. The SR engine you're talking about 25 thou to 28 thou, and the LR engine is what's the LR engine? Is oh no, hang on a minute. What am I was saying? The SR one is 35 to 38, and the LR is um. Is slightly different so all the engines are different basically so you need to get your manual and check it quite carefully to to make sure you do your bump clearances and they are very important to do and uh, yeah but what in the engine if, if you don't get your bump clearances right the engine won't run as well as it should do so there we go that's it that's this short little video on bump clearances I've had a bit of a tidy up in, in the garage too look at that I've got my tools all racked up not bad, I don't know how long that will stay like that for, but it's always good to try and be tidy. There's a few different gaskets and things here, that's off a PH1. That. So, okay, well I hope you enjoyed that and it is of use. I'm not a trained mechanic, I'm just a bit of an enthusiast, so any comments and any ideas from anyone else would be great. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, hope it proves helpful, and catch you all later. Bye for now.